Hello, John Talley here with PartZilla.com. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the swing arm and suspension bearings on our 2007 Suzuki GSX-R1000R. It's going to be a little involved, so let's head over to the table, talk about the tools and the parts you're going to need to pull this off. So let's go. Welcome to the tool table, guys. And as you can tell by the sheer number that are laid out, this is going to be a skill level three. Now I'm gonna already assume that you have the basic tools in your toolbox. We're gonna go through those real quick just to give you a range that you're gonna need. On the wrench side, anywhere from an eight all the way up to a 27 millimeter. On the socket side, anywhere from an eight all the way up to a 36 millimeter is gonna be required. You're gonna need many different extensions, whether it be quarter inch, three eighths, or half inch. Of course, you're going to need a quarter inch and a three eighths ratchet, then a breaker bar. And as always, a good torque wrench. Also going to need a couple of different pick tools, flashlight, screwdrivers, cutters, needle nose pliers, and hammers. That covers just the basics. So now let's get into the real specialty stuff that you're going to need. Let's start off with the chain maker or breaker. You're going to need to pick up a good one from Motion Pro. They make two different ones. You want to get the larger size. I think they call it a jumbo. Motion Pro also makes a pivot pin hex bolt removal tool. You're going to need that as well. Then a good hex tool because you're going to need a range in between 17 up to 24 millimeters. Then you're gonna to need to pick up a good vernier caliper because when you go to put the chain on, there's gonna be certain measurements that are down to the tenth of a millimeter. You're also going to need a bearing remover set because you're gonna be working with small needle type bearings and they require a specialty type of device to get them pulled. I know it's kind of pricey, but you're gonna to have to get this if you're gonna be successful. Now, when it comes to reinstalling the bearings, you want to get this. It is a bearing puller and extractor set. It's actually made for a car, but it'll do what we need by going through the swing arm and then pulling in the bearings on either side. Now, as far as the parts go, reference our exploded parts diagram because there are several different size bearings that are used in either the swing arm or the lever which attaches to the bottom of the shock absorber. A lot of different part numbers, a lot to keep up with, I know. So keep that in the back of your mind as one of your tools in your toolbox so we can get this done correctly. So once you've got all your tools and all of your parts together, we can go over there and get it done. So let's go. All right guys, so how do you know that your bearings need to be replaced? Well, it's simple. Lift up the machine like I've got it done and then push just horizontally on it and it it's probably moving almost a quarter of an inch. Another wear indicator, just go ahead and lift it up, see what it does. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be out on track with something this loose. So, which ones are worn? Well, I can't really tell from out here. We won't know until we get the swing arm off and start actually looking at the, uh, the collars and the bearings themselves. But going in this far, I'm gonna replace them all because I guarantee you, if one's worn, they're all gonna be worn. So let's find out if I'm right. All right, step one, we need to get this chain taken off. And there's a couple of different ways we can do this. I'm gonna go for the grinding method. All we have to do here is just grind it down even with the plate. Then I can use a punch tool or a chisel tool and knock that, uh, that outer plate off. All right, chain is off. All right, next, let's get off that rear tire. And that is a 36 millimeter socket. Lift up on it a little bit, make it easier to pull through. Just ride it back. Now the caliper is just sitting in a groove, so it'll just pull out. And we're just gonna lay it out to the side. All right, let's get off this little uh, bracket here that's holding the hose for the rear brake caliper. And we're gonna feed it back up and actually zip tie it up onto the rear seat so it's out of our way. All right, next, let's start with unbolting the, uh, the shock. That's a 14 on the nut side and a 12 on the bolt. Yeah, there's just nothing inspiring about that at all. 
Next, let's go ahead and go after those dog bones, and get them out of the way, and then we'll get that lower linkage pulled out. Tell you what, so far I've been working around it. That exhaust is starting to bother me. Let's just pull it off. A little problem there. The good part is uh, I already have a new system that's going to go on the bike in a different episode, but nice. I want to go ahead and take off the top section of the shock. Suzuki was kind enough to actually give you access on either side to make that possible because there is quite a bit of torque on here. Get that bolt out and out she comes. All right, next we need to get the swing arm pivot lock nut off and you're going to need this special tool to do it. All right, what I've got is a 19 millimeter going into this end of the axle and then I have to break loose the outer nut on the swing arm pivot bolt on the other side. There she goes. Now I'm going to unscrew it from this end. And there she is. Last, let's get this section out and then we can start working on replacing all the bearings. That's where you get a half inch of play. It all starts with a, a 30 seconds. Once you extend it out to the length of a, a swing arm, all that adds up to a lot of movement. Let's get our chain guide out of the way. If yours is really, really worn down, now would be a good time to replace it because you have to take the swing arm off to do it. Mine's in okay shape, but not great. Well, everything's apart. Let's start replacing some bearings. Move your two pivot collars. It's gonna be one on either side. And when you look inside, you can actually see the bearings. And then in the middle, in between them, is a spacer. So there's a couple of different ways we can do this. They make a tool which actually will extract it out. It's kind of pricey. That's the way I'm going to go. If you don't have that tool, use a, a rod like this and you'll go all the way through and catch it on the inside. About right here, you'll be at a bit of an angle. Catch on the inside edge and you can start knocking it out. You'll probably have to go back and forth until you finally get it to work its way all the way out. Me, I'm going to go ahead and use the correct tool. So the one we're going to be using is a 28 millimeter. I'm going to run this tool down inside of it and it's going to expand this outer end and that's when, what's going to actually grab a hold of the bearing itself. Then we're going to be able to pull it out. And to readjust a little bit because I'm going to have to put some torque on this. be able to pull it about halfway and then these threads are going to run out and I'll have to back the tool off and just add a couple more spacers. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you these are, bearings are really wide so I'm having to put a fair amount of pressure on them to pull. So trying to knock them through with something like this you're going to be there a while the good part is the more you uh, pull it out, the easier it gets because it's got less surface area to hold on to. Let's take this part back out, add in another spacer or two, and then we'll keep going. There she is. Now we can take that spacer out. Now we just need to do the same procedure on the other side. There it is. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, hopefully your machine looks a lot better than this one does. But since I've got it broken all the way down, I'm going to take advantage of that. Go ahead and get this cleaned up, put a light sanding on it and respray it. Just try to spruce it up a little bit. 
Next, let's continue pulling out bearings. There's four more that need to come out of this, this piece here. We can use the tool to do this or a press or heck, let's put it in a vise and let's see if we can at least knock them out by hand just to try a different technique. I'm actually just gonna use a couple of my sockets to try to pull this off. First one, the one on the bottom, it just needs to be bigger than the bearing itself. And then the one up top just needs to fit inside of it. So let's give it a couple of taps, see if we can drive it through. Oh, so close. All right, guys, that worked pretty well. Knocked out the larger of the two. There's a smaller one here I'm gonna do the same technique with, but then I have these two that I have to deal with. Won't be able to use the same technique. So we're gonna use a steel rod to see if we can punch them out that way. All right, we've got an angle back toward the vise. Let's see if we can get it knocked through. That actually came out a little bit easier than I thought but I'd be a tough sell that that would work on the swing arm. But if somebody out there tries it and is successful, why don't you leave me a comment in the bottom because I want to hear about it. All right, everybody's out. Let's start putting the new ones back in. So we're gonna start with the larger bearing right here. And that's gonna be number four on your drawings if you're keeping up. All right, the way we need to do this, these bearings are fairly fragile. Believe it or not, those little uh, rollers in there, if you hit it real hard, they'll just knock right out. So they don't play well with hammers as far as pulling them in. So the way we're gonna do this is use part of this kit, run the thread through there, and we basically have a, a large washer on either side and that's gonna push it in. All right, that will take it flush, but at that point, we need to get a socket of the same outer diameter and just recess it just a half a millimeter. So it needs to be a little bit below the surface of the lever arm itself. All right, if you do not have this kit, you can just go to the hardware store and get a length of threaded rod and a couple of good size washers, and that should be enough to pull it in. So, let's go ahead and get this set up. All right, everything looks square. We'll start bringing her in. All right, guys, I've got everything lined up to at least get it started, but I'm only gonna be able to come in this distance. That'll at least get it centered and on its way in. Then we'll back it back off, get a socket the same diameter as the outside of the bearing, and then push it all the way in. And then we're gonna be checking it every so often to make sure we only go about a half a millimeter in. And we should see the same thing on the other side. So those two measurements should be the same. Yeah, so we're, we're even on this side and this side's still a little recessed. So we need to split that distance so we're roughly a half millimeter off. So a little bit more and that should have it centered. That is what we want, it's a half a millimeter on either side. And now we're gonna do the same thing with this bearing on the other end. This is actually number two on the drawing, same procedure. Now remember, don't knock this around because those individual little rollers in there, they will pop right out. All right, the cup that I have here, or the driver cup that I have here is a little bit too big for this end. So we're just gonna add a washer to it because we're just trying to keep it flush. Right, let's take a look at that. All right, next we need to do this section where you actually have two bearings and then this spacer that goes all the way through. Now the bearings on the drawings are number three, and this particular spacer is number five. So we're gonna start with just one of the bearings, but on this particular section, it's important that the stamped lettering be facing the outside because there's actually a very small seal there. So we want both the seals facing out. So we'll start with this one, same technique we did before. And on this one, we're gonna be a little bit deeper than the other two. They want this at about one millimeter depth. So let's push it that last little bit in. Let's flip it around and do the last one. That should be a millimeter in. That's it. The bearings already have grease in there, but we're gonna add to that. Higher the quality, the better off you'll be. 
All right, with all this packed, let's go ahead and put our spacers in. The bigger one should be number eight, and the smaller one should be number 11. And then we can just put it to the side, and then do the swing arm. So, same technique here. We're gonna start with this side. Wanna look for the, uh, the writing on the end of the bearing. You want that facing out. We'll just get it started by gently tapping it to get it centered. And this is bearing number two on your drawing. She's bottomed out. And these we're just going to carry down until they're flush. Now, let me get the spacer in there. We'll go ahead and start our new bearing like we did on the other side. And once again, make sure that any of the imprints are on the outside because that's where the seal is. All right, guys, well, that's got all of them in. The only ones that we didn't replace are the ones up here. But as you can see, this, this particular bike has what they call a set of lowering dog bones. So you would have another set up inside that particular piece, but it's not on this particular machine anymore. All right, now that the bearings are in, let's go ahead and get that additional grease in there. We got the center spacer that is in between the two bearings. Then you have these outer spacers that go on either side through the bearings. And they're all gonna make contact together on the inside once we get everything tightened down. So I can actually feel that the spacer that's in here is dead even with the two bearing spacers. So, yep, we got it. All right, we're done with the bearings. You survived. Now all we need to do is put it back together. Let's start by getting our new chain guide back in place. All right, we're getting ready to put in our swing arm pivot axle and we want to go ahead and give it a light coating of grease. We're going to take down this till it bottoms out and then we put 11 foot pounds on it. All right guys, the real trick here is we've got this set at 11 foot pounds. What I have to do is have somebody hold this still so I can go put the nut on at 72.5 foot-pounds. There we go. All right, last but not least, we take the pivot thrust nut with that special tool we had earlier. And we're going to take this to 65 foot-pounds. All right, we still have a fair amount to put together, but let's feel it now. That's what we were looking for. She's got just a little bit of play. Remember how it was moving almost a quarter of an inch? I doubt it's moving a sixteenth now. With just a thin layer of grease now that we've got this cleaned up. We're going to get this first bolt through the lever here. All right, let's get our dog bone hooked up. Now granted, if, if you had the stock set up, that front bearing, set of bearings all the way up front, that will be 71 foot-pounds as well. I've just got the lever just uh, hand tight in place and we need to torque it down now. So the actual bolt that's going through the bottom of your swing arm, that needs to go to 71 foot pounds. And the one that goes through, well, what I'm calling the dog bones at the bottom, that needs to be 56. All right, now we can get the stand out of the way and go ahead and get our uh, shock in there. Got a little grease on our bolt. And each one of these is going to get 36 foot-pounds. All right, guys, as far as the swing arm bearing installation goes, we're actually finished with that. So let's see what we ended up with. Oh, yeah, much, much better. Still has a little bit of vertical movement, but I guarantee you that's that aftermarket dog legs that are down at the bottom. So what happens next? Well, of course, we need to remount the tire, go ahead and remount the caliper, and then we need to reattach and restake the chain. So if you want a detailed video on how to do that, we actually have it. So it'll go through the exact process of getting the chain on there, both the, uh, the front and the rear sprockets in place, and then getting it staked correctly. So if you would, reference that video and I can walk you through it. Well, listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. 
we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at partzilla.com and if you like what you see why don't you hit that subscribe button right there until next time we just want to say thank you and we will see you in the next video